Bonsoir. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing fine. Mm -hmm. We were experiencing some technical difficulties with the video. We just realized that we were teaching the entire uh, class before without a face here. The camera was too much down. <laughs> Uh, so, so hopefully can you can see us well, bonsoir tout le monde. Are we uh, in full screen mode now? <laughs> okay, then we just have to be, be a bit more behind this. Okay, okay. Um, Good. so welcome again in our living room for the second technique class. Normally tango and wine, but Today. tonight gin and wine, okay? We have a nice gin uh, from our friend in Cone, Sabu. So Sal, if you're looking, cheers! <laughs> It's called sooner. Very nice. Good. So, today, technique on walking, uh, specifically La Marche. Forward walking only. Next week, we will discuss backward walking. Yeah, we were going to do it in one class, but then we realized <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. one half an hour will not be enough. No. But, okay, let's not so, lose any time. No, let's continue. So, start. Uh, I start by explaining you the three reasons, or one of the three, the first reason, uh, why we find it important to maintain and to keep on working on the walking technique. So in the beginning and also during your tango um, learning process, there are some three crucial elements we find important to keep on focusing. One, for us especially, is the connection with the floor and the partner. Yes, so we need to keep working our technique of our stepping for that reason, but also for two other reasons actually. So the, the connection with the floor and our partner. The second one actually would be to maintain our balance, which is um, crucial in the dance. Uh, so when we pivot or when we are walking or when we are performing movements, we would preferably be able to maintain the balance. And the third reason, uh, which is also fairly important for tango, we feel, yeah. is that um, when you have a good technique of uh, stepping forward or backward, you will be prepared to react to the music faster. We will explain throughout this uh, class a little bit those three um, things that we that you can find uh, and that you will, might seem uh, have some yeah. difficulties with. Okay, good. Let's start. Let's start. If you have any questions. Whatsoever, please feel free to post it in the chat. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Marie. We <laughs> <laughs> don't have you okay. back here. Good. So, we can uh, divide our step into a few yes. parts, actually. Uh, so, the first part we would call initio, initio, so the start of our step. And what we mean by this is when we make a forward step, we're going to feel how we can roll the body weight to the front of our feet and we're going to relax our both knees. So try that everybody. Stand on your two feet, then roll the body weight to the front and start to unlock your knees. Now when I say roll the body weight, I actually mean push yourself to the front of your feet. Oh, we're, not looking... we're not looking to let us, like Michael Jackson, fall to the feet, but we're actually pushing ourselves towards the partner, in my case or in your Okay, good. Now, let's uh, make one thing clear. For the leaders, there is two different kind of steps. There is the small step, the normal step, without any intention, and that is this one. When we want to make a bigger step, we're not going to go just forward and along the knees. When we want to make a bigger step, we will go more backwards, so the follower will go more to the front of our feet, and we will start to push forward from there. So there is a difference there. Don't worry about that yet. Now, the second part of the step, so this is for a basic small step, not the big step yet. So we roll to the front, we push to the front of our feet, we unlock our knees, and then we're going to make a small projection of the free leg. Now, before making that small projection, we're going to do the same, roll to the front, and now we're going to actually, the standing leg, so in my case the right, we're going to push the hip a little bit on the back of our feet or incline. So from this profile, so we move to the front and then we incline and we push the hip a little bit backwards. I'm exaggerating, it's like we're doing something like this, backward and sideways, but very, very small. So forward, unlock the knees and then incline the hip to the side that is keeping the leg. Now, project your leg, the free one, but very small, so that you don't do this in the chest. 
small. And then push forward and correct. Okay? So let's try that a few times. So, neutral position. We push ourselves to the front, we unlock both knees, we incline the hip and we bring it backwards, we free the leg and we push forward. We commit. Okay, back. Change your weight. So, roll to the front, unlock the knees, then incline the hip to the standing leg side, then free the leg and then push forward. Connect and reverse. Change the weight. So now roll forward. Unlock the knees. The hip incline my inclination to the standing leg. And then we free up the leg and we push forward until we reach the new leg and we collect. So we show the inclination again from the front. So we move to the front. My leg, my weight is on the right now. My knees, knees are unlocked, and now I incline the hip a little bit more to that side. And you see that? So a small inclination of the hip to that side, so we can free the leg and start pushing forward. So that inclination goes sideways, but also backwards. So we get a sort of opposition and a rotation going in the hip. Okay? Good. If we don't do that part with the inclination of the hip, you will get sort of this, and then you will fall without any energy to the step. So this is actually to be a bit more grounded. Okay? Good. This is... First step. That was the first part. Now, to get the engine of your step, you will need to use actually your hip more. So, you go forward, you roll to the ball of your feet, and vous allez vers le devant, le métatars, unlock the knees, and then you make your inclination. In my case, I choose my left one, to be the standing leg, so I go down to the back. There's the inclination of the hip. I free up small step, but now how do I send myself over there? I keep on pushing towards the floor, like from here, from this part in my hip. I push myself until I have arrived with my chest on top of the ball of the feet. Because that was my starting position, I want to maintain the starting position in arrival. Then I collect. So the same exercise as you did with Sven, which was you go forward to the ball of your feet, unlock the knee, you incline the hip, and now it's like there is an engine pushing me first to free up a little bit the first the free leg, and then it pushed me to step. I arrive, the free leg now is the back one, and I collect it. Let's show the other side. Same initiation where you go on the front of your foot, unlock the knee. Now, my right leg is going to be the standing leg, which I go in an inclination to the hip. I free up a little bit the left one, and then this part of my hip pushes towards the floor and sends me into my next forward movement. Yes. And Long legs. Exactly. So this is the picture in the end, so once you have the leg there, that you want. You don't want a picture that looks like a bit like this, or if it just stays, but just the knee comes already. So we want to have that long line because that makes sure that you push all the way until the end of your step, until your body weight has been transferred. What we see in most cases is the first three phases that Sven explained, you are able to do and they work very well. The problem starts um, when you start to free up the hip, the free leg to go. Then you imagine this one is the engine of your step. In reality, it's the standing leg pushing you into a forward motion. And then you can collect. Okay, so we have four parts in that step. The first part is the initiation of our step. And we could actually say, okay, we have the initiation and then there is a second part where we have the hip and the projection. Then the third part of our step is the pushing to the new leg. And the fourth part is the collection of our feet. Okay, our dog is very thirsty tonight as well. <laughs> okay, good. Now, let's practice a bit uh, this step, uh, moving a few steps 
forward and in, in, in your living room. So you can do it solo or with your partner. <laughs> we have to practice. Okay, good. So, um, what we are going to do is we will just make a few steps back and forward. Now, that first movement that we are doing here, you do not need to redo that. So it's not like we make one step, we arrive, then we redo that. We can add that inici initial part at the end of our step. So first, all together, we do inis initial of the step, then hip inclination, then free of the leg, and then push. We reach the new leg. Now, we can add the initiation of our next step here, so that part where we move to the front of our feet and we relax the knee, okay? So now when you collect, you're ready to make your new projection and new step. So if you continue to push through, you will arrive in that bended knee, you will be able to project and push to the next step, okay? So that part is fairly, it's challenging, especially in the beginning. So you need to realize it's one step, but there is another one coming up. So you need to also continue pushing to make that one. So let's do that again. We roll to the front of our feet, we push to the front of our feet, we incline the hip, we free the leg, we push forward. Now we continue pushing, we reach the axis. But the step is not over because we want a new one. We're going to continue pushing until we reach this position with the knee in front. Ready for a new projection, push through until you are in the bended knee, ready for a new projection, and we're out of room. <laughs> okay, good. Let's try that a little bit faster. So five, six, seven, and roll forward, hip incline, project, push through, project, push through, project, push. And push through the step. Project, push, and push through. Okay. Just for the followers to help you a little bit more because we are on high heels, I'm always when Sven is saying I push through, is I unlock the knee here, not by bending eh? uh, backwards, but I unlock a little bit so it's easier. I will show in this way. So it's easier to collect, and then I can use this standing leg to project and push through. So it's easier to maintain the equilibrium in that way because they have flat heels. I exactly. Guess. Now, uh, we get the question often where whether or not when the forward leg is projecting and taking the weight, where does the weight arrive? Does it arrive in the center, in the front, on the back? Actually, we don't care so much. Um, there is a few ways. The classical way would be to uh, start to move forward, incline the hip, we project and you will see that my toe is in contact and will stay in contact until the end of the movement and I will transfer my weight to the front of my foot immediately. So I am on the front actually here. So that's the classical way of stepping forward. And actually, in our opinion, the best way not to make any mistakes. Uh, why? You would say because if you do the toes, you will feel that your body normally is not inclined to do that. But if you do the heel, you will rotate backward more easy. So both are possible. You can do the toe and then transfer to the toe in the end of the movement. Or you can go forwards and then just project your leg and then put the heel down. But not too far away because then your chest will move back. For the ladies I would recommend also to just use the toes because then you remain in contact with the floor. Remember one of the three pillars we said contact and the floor connection with the floor is important. Okay, very good. Let's practice a few more times. Yes. Five, six, seven, and push forward, incline, project, push, push through, project, push, push through, project, push, push through, project, push, push through, project. Push, push through, project, push, push through, project, push, push through, project, push, appuyé, et puis continue à appuyé. Project, push, push through, project, push, push through. Ok, good. Project, push, push through, project, push, push through, project, 
push, push through. Good. Again, this is for a small step. So what could be a small step? Let's say we're dancing rhythmical music and there is no real idea to make a big step. So we're dancing and I just want to go from there to make a, like a quadrado. Or when we're dancing milonga, it's the same principle. Okay? And when we're dancing milonga, we're also not really thinking about the projection. There's no time. So we're just thinking about the hip inclined to the floor and then we continue. Okay, now, there is a, uh, also a possibility to have a bigger step for both actually followers and leaders, I just realized. When I want her to make a bigger forward step, yeah, because ladies, you also walk forward many times in tango, I will actually invite her, show you from the profile, to put her body weight more to the back of her feet. So she will go sit down with the hip so she will be able to make a bigger step forward, which has more dynamic in the end. Okay. So it's like there is this chair, you can go and have a seat onto it, so you can really Bam. push. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, for the leaders, it's the same. If we're dancing to passionate music, slow music, and we want to increase the size of our steps a bit, I cannot just increase the size from neutral. So if I were to make our steps and just go like we were practicing, she would get not the attention of a big step. She doesn't I have not understand. the energy. So what do we do is actually, sorry, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my weight more to the back of my feet. So I'm going to go and sit down onto an imaginary chair. So I have my hip more towards the heel and my chest remains on my feet actually. So I have a little bit of inclination. This is going to invite her to fall forward to her feet and already she feels like projecting her leg because of that. See? Okay, so now if I stay with my hip there connected and I start to push forward my position, she will get a large step with more dynamic and slower. Okay, make sense? Again, backstepping next week. Yes, let's try that all together, yes. also the followers. So yes. now we add that backward movement. So instead of moving from neutral forward, First we go backwards, 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 we go and stay seated and then from there we're going to push our position completely forward. So now we take the leg, project, push and arrive. Okay, now we are here, our leg is bended, so now we can continue pushing forward more. Okay, and let's go that, do that again. We can only put two steps now. Yeah. <laughs> so we go backwards with the hip. Okay, we keep connection with the floor, with the hip, and then push forward, okay, and forward, okay, good, again, five, six, seven, and one, two, and three, okay, again, five, six, seven, back, and forward. Four, four. <laughs> She's in the kitchen now. Six, seven, we go backwards in the hip. And one, two, and three, four. Okay, good. Now, if we want to continue making big steps, so you will see from the profile, I move backwards, and I start to incline the hip, and when I start to move, you will see that this knee starts to go a bit more bending in the floor. So, what actually we were doing before, we were bending here, we are actually now doing already here. So, you also see that my level of dance goes a bit more down. And because of that, I am able to make a bigger impulse to transfer my weight. So, that's why we make a bigger step, okay? So, let's try that. We go backwards, okay, now we go forward, but we bend our standing knee into the floor. Bend the standing knee into the floor. Bend the standing knee into the floor, and then we push <laughs> forward. He's sitting repeating and repeating. Okay, and forward, good. And if you want to continue the forward big steps, it just keep the same level. So look, we are here, down, and now we keep the same level. So here I'm going to bend the same amount and continue, bend the same amount. 
Again, Good. this is if you want to take large forward movements, large forward steps. You don't do that when you are doing a regular forward step, then you apply a different technique. Now, okay. what would happen if you don't do it in the phases we propose? What would happen with the connection in the partnership, the connection with the floor? One of the things if you're like not going to the forward movement and unlock the knees, but would go and remain backward, is that your partner, in my case, if Sven doesn't do it, I will not feel yes. what is happening. So that's true. Let's say that I don't move from the standing leg, but I move more the free leg. So this will happen. My free leg starts the movement and she's still there and there is no space. The space will become available much later, so we lose the connection with the partner, but especially with the floor. I'm unable to make a sizable step. But the same for the ladies, because you get often a lot of steps in tango that move forward, forward ocho for example. So here, if she does the free leg, you can try that wrong. If you do the free leg, it will be very difficult to continue and afterwards make an ocho for example. This is the wrong way. You can try the wrong way. So we disconnect. You can see that. Okay? So now, ladies, move more. Push yourself to the front of your feet. Continue pushing. So that maybe a different movement will come out there. Let's show that again. Wrong. So what happens if I don't do it? I will not feel it. So you will not feel I the lead for the ocho. <laughs> okay. What happens if he does it wrong? If I do it wrong, so I will move forward and she will not feel my movement. I'm too late. Okay, and we cannot okay. dance. Good. Okay, we are talking a lot, but uh, this is a technical class. Now, um, the other part that we said uh, that could go wrong, so there were three things. The first one, in the beginning we said connection with the floor and the partner. The second thing we said was actually the balance. So you saw already that when Sonia was doing it wrong, so when she made her forward step from the free leg, that the balance in the next part for the ocho is very, very difficult to maintain. Okay? So also for me the same. If I make a step from the free leg and I try to pivot there, it's impossible. The third part, and that's also very important, is the music. You have to realize that if you walk forward, from the free leg, it will take a little bit more time for you to arrive to your axis with the chest and all your body. So that means we always lose half a beat in which we want to decide maybe what to do. So she will be one half a half beat later than me. And I will always, if I do it wrong, be half a beat later than what the music made me decide. So it's uh, easier to be ready. Okay? Yeah. And if you're ready with your partner as a follower, then it's easy for him to interpret the music as he wanted. Otherwise, he's always a bit in delay with the music and he wants to guide you in probably different steps. Exactly. Okay, we propose that we practice this a bit together with the partner if you are together in the partner. Otherwise, keep on practicing backward and uh, forward and um, backward movements. So and don't, especially don't forget to breathe because I know with these technical kind of workshops uh, and classes, you are getting every energy up, so okay. relax. Good. Do so like Tana. What we will do is we will do three steps forward and then three steps backward. So you have one, two, three, change, and then one, two, three, change, and one, two, three, change, and one, two, three. Change and one, two, three, 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 change, one, two, three, change and one, two, three, change. So keep practicing that maybe a little while until you get the hang of it, okay? All the parts that were there in the beginning are now here. So let's break it down and try it slow once more. So we're making a normal step, not a big step. So that means I don't go back. So look, I go towards the partner, I unlock my hip, 
I project my free leg and I push. Okay? If I want another step, I continue pushing until I am bended and then another one. I continue pushing until she's in the next projection and then we go to the next step. So that continuum of the pushing, of course, if you want to stop, you don't have to continue pushing. Okay? For the ladies, the same. Let's try it. So if you feel that the leader wants to bring you forward, then you keep on pushing on the standing leg. So again, you go in inclination with the hip and you push, project the leg and push forward. Push forward, push forward. Change your weight. And, and one, two, three, and, and again. Push, one, two, push, three. push. And you can maintain one, the contact with the floor two, when you stop. Three. And in particular and on the one, toes. Two, toes. Three. Toes. And one. Two. two three. And one. Push, and two. Push, and three. Push, and one. Two. Three. And one. Push, two. Push, Three. So we had to move. And one, two, three. And one, two, three. The back stepping we will work next week. Okay? So the same time, the same place. One, two, three. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Maybe not the same time. Okay? We will do it Thursday. We keep you informed. We keep Which you informed. Okay, good. Do Let's... you have any questions? Is it clear enough? Uh, can you hear us? Um, oh. If not, you can always post something. Is it pictures. working? Is it clear enough? Okay, so let's wrap up and yes. repeat what we have said. So we summarize. We summarize. All the reasons why we need to work this technique is to be able to be connected, connected with, with the floor and especially your partner. And the partner. Secondly, to be actually in balance all the time in our own body. Okay. And Thirdly, third, to be ready to interpret the music and to be prepared exactly. to dance with the music. Exactly. Now, all of those things that we are doing now is in order is to improve that part. So we have our four parts of the step. Normal step, so not a big step. First part is initio, so the first part of our step. Roll to the front, push to the front. Second part, and incline the hip and push down to the back. Don't forget to unlock the knees before you go into yeah. inclination. Then, within the second part, we have the projection of our free leg, small projection. Then we push third part to transfer the weight and then we collect. Okay? That is if we want one step. If we want two, three, four steps, we need to continue pushing until the knee is bent again. So, let's do that. We go forward, push. Incline the hip, the standing leg, projection, push forward. You want another step, so continue pushing until you reach the unlocked knee. So that you can project and push. Project and push. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, things to avoid is to go forward with the hip. Okay, so when you start the step, you don't want to do this. You want to make the movement not from yes, the free leg. Both for the follower and the leader. You want to make the movement from the standing leg, not from the free leg. And if you do it like this, you have no balance issues and you are ready to follow your partner and interpret the music together with him. Exactly. Good. We hope that was clear. Luckily, we did only forward step because yes. it would have been too much to do also the backward step. We yeah. also would like to say thank you to those of you who donated already that's really kind of you we appreciate it very much there is no obligation of course no. this class is completely for free but if you want there were some people asking us for a paypal uh, link so down in the description you will find a link that you can uh, make a donation uh, of course uh, feel free to do that or not okay. so the classes remain available for you online on the youtube channel you start to know by now so if you want to review this video and have a look at it at ease and practice again you can of course next week we tackle the backward stepping so we hope to welcome you there as well again okay. stay safe stay safe and healthy especially cheers have cheers. a good night everybody bye bye, bye, -bye.